planking the Ernestina was a daunting task right from the start. The hull had to be reshaped. It couldn't be patterned and planked as it was. It had to be redesigned. Um, we took we took the lines from a previous haul out in the late 20s, early 30s, and we tried to loft the, the boat in place, truer to those lines. So the, the shape that it, we, we ended up with was much more true to the design. The planking came from reclaimed timbers from some mills in uh, Massachusetts. Uh, they, they were milled locally and then further milled here. Uh, each plank was cut, cut to, uh, to shape to, and beveled each individual plank. It takes about six or eight people to hang a plank with some uh, very large clamps each plank is then uh, nailed or charneled in, charnel fastened with dowels and wedged, wedged dowels. Um, and then each plank is cocked. As the project went throughout the summer and, and went into the fall, we were able to put a tent over the boat. The decking we used is uh, reclaimed southern yellow pine. It was, uh, they were old, old beams from a uh, warehouse down in south somewhere. Um, and the process of, of taking these beams and making it into the deck that you see right here, the, the beams had to get shipped up here to our Sawyer and all the old fastenings removed um, and then milled down to the dimensions that we needed. And then once we got those dimension pieces, then we had to fill all those old fastening holes. So there was a, like a thousand little nail holes and bolt holes and everything in it and that all had to be bore out all the old old rotten wood and put epoxy in it and then glue in new wood to it to to make make the new decking sound um, and we figured the the warehouse that they were taken out of is probably about 150 years old and the rings and the, the decking that we were seeing was right around 150 years old so it was a it's an old tree that that came out of here which is pretty cool and the tides have Exciting. This is uh, like having a birth of a child uh, and seeing the, the work done on the, the forward section, she looks absolutely gorgeous and seeing her slowly move into the water, a natural element for her is absolutely fabulous. This is a very exciting time. The work is ship your sides and the seas you sail are running black in time will know our loss. It's too late now for you. Is it too late now for us? Can you teach us what you know before you go? For the winter is upon you now, and time is passing slow, and the tides ebb and flow down below. For the winter is upon you here on Tuesday the 5th of May and uh, we're going to go to Gloucester and have a, a sail around with a schooner landing coming out to greet us with some dignitaries aboard.
and then we were going to do a dockage in Gloucester and a uh, reception. And the following day we'll be heading for Boston with some dignitaries aboard. It's about a 40 mile trip. And uh, we'll leave in the morning and uh, be there in the afternoon or right after lunchtime where we're going to dock at the famous Rose Wharf in downtown Boston to do a reception for the mayor of Boston and the dignitaries from the State House. We'll be coming down to visit the vessel. Uh, this trip is a side trip uh, on our way to New Bedford to try to raise the funds to complete the restoration of the stern of the vessel, which is scheduled for shortly, but uh, depending on the funds, of course, in this day and age. In the meantime, she'll be laying at her home port in New Bedford. Uh, we'll be arriving there on Saturday the 9th of May at high noon for a grand reception uh, from the Portuguese and, and Cape Verde community and the uh, residents of New Bedford.